Welcome back to the Mind Body Project. Thanks for look, taking a little time to join me today. The whole month of January, uh, we have been talking about mental health. A lot of times, the first of the year, we we concentrate on physical uh, health. Uh, we go on a diet. Uh, we clean up our eating. We uh, we try to exercise more. Um, all these different things that we do when it comes to our physical health. Uh, typically, with New Year's resolutions, that all starts on January 1st. We say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. I'm going to do uh, all these different things. And I want to concentrate instead um, on January being about mental health, about um, working on, uh, because yes, physical health is so important, but I feel like sometimes we neglect our mental health uh, because sometimes out of sight, out of mind. Um, our, our physical health is there because we uh, we look in the mirror. We put on clothes. We, you know we can feel those. But sometimes our mental health can um, not be well and not be in the best shape. But sometimes we say, "Well, I'm just tired. I'm just moody. I'm just cranky." All these different things that we say um, that, that for things that may be affecting our mental health. So I just wanted to um, end this month um, on talking about mental health, kind of a wrap up uh, about. Um, about the month, about uh, the last few shows that we've had um, on the Mind Body Project in January, talking about uh, talking about mental health, and I encourage you to go back and listen to those. Um, I'm just briefly going to talk about it, talk about those, but uh, please take time if you hadn't to go back and listen to those. We had some had some great conversations, had some um, great thoughts, um, but we're also going to talk a little bit today too about how that how our physical um, health and mental health are are pretty similar in, in how we make those happen. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But uh, first, I want to talk about, you know, our first uh, episode this month on mental health. I sat down with my friend, uh, Monica DeLeo. Um, she is a um, counselor and therapist that we talked to um, that we had a great conversation with. And she just had all kinds of insight um, and, and ideas and techniques and tools that can be utilized um, in order to um, help us, you know, improve our mental health. And she also shared, you know, the difference between mental health, mental illness. Um, it was just a great conversation with her. Um, one of the things she said that, that she believed that everybody can benefit from uh, therapy, um, from, uh, from counseling, from therapy, just because um, she goes, now, does everybody need it? Maybe not necessarily, but she said everybody could benefit from it. Um, it's just like everybody can benefit from eating better. Any, everybody can benefit from um, getting, a, uh, getting some steps, more steps. Everybody can benefit from that. And she just felt that, that therapy, um, everybody could definitely benefit. And it may not be something that, that is needed indefinitely, but it is just needed for a short amount of time um, and then, then just picked up as needed, but it's definitely beneficial. Um, another thing that, that she shared was with how, how important journaling can be and a technique with, with dealing with anxiety and mental health, just in general. Um, it's a great way to get down your thoughts. A lot of times, mental health, sometimes we get all those thoughts and all those things clogged up in our head. And it's a good way to get those out, to um, write them down, type them down, put them in your notes, whatever it is. Um, it's a great way. She also shared with us a little bit about a grounding technique. Um, somebody that might have anxiety um, you know, there's different things that they can do. Uh, grounding is, you know, they might be counting um, how many tiles there is or counting um, how many dots or, you know, just counting their fingers. It, but there's a great, great tools that you can use to ground. And, and she shared with so many other tools and techniques um, with us uh, over that, that conversation. It was just wonderful. I encourage you, if you haven't, go back and listen to that one. Um, that was uh, a few episodes ago, but just a wonderful conversation with Monica. Um, then, then also shared um, after after that show with Monica, I shared about food for thought, about how important food is um, to our brain and to our mind. And oftentimes, we just uh, equate food with our physical being. Is it going to help me physically? Is it going to make me uh, fitter? Is it going to make me healthier? I mean, are my numbers going to change? Uh, when I go to the doctor, all these different things. And so many uh, times we don't associate the foods that we're putting on our body with um, our, our mind, with our mental health. Uh, but, but everything that all the food, you know, affects our muscles, it's going to affect our brain in the same way. And so I just shared a little bit about that, about uh, the, the SAD diet, 
which is the SAD diet is the standard American diet. And it is a SAD diet. It's, it's high in processed foods. Uh, it, it's, it's more, you know, if you go to a restaurant now, um, it's really big enough that two people could share, sometimes three people. Uh, it's just a, a big serving and, and it's just processed foods. And, and it's, it, it really, we need to transition to whole foods, whole foods, clean foods, um, you know, and, and foods that are not inflammatory because you think uh, there's some foods that, that are inflammatory. And when you take those in, you feel inflamed, your muscles feel sore and tired. Um, you just feel some aches and pains. And our body takes that and feels that, but our mind is no different. Our brain is no different because our brain feels the same way. It can be inflamed. And, and when, our, when our brain is, is not at its best function, then it affects our mind because our mind is uh, what comes about from our brain. It's, it's, it's two separate things. Our brain, we can touch and feel. Uh, our mind is the abstract. Uh, but those, those thoughts and those things in our mind are affected by our brain. And when we're not feeding our body the, the right nutrients, the right foods it needs, the same is true. It, it affects our brain just as it affects the rest of our body. And then it thus affects our mind. And then so many times we, we want to make excuses and say, well, um, I'm just irritable. I'm just tired. I just, I just can't think straight. And we have all these reasons why that might be happening. But if we go back and look at our food, we're taking in a sad diet versus a whole food anti-inflammatory uh, diet. So um, all those are affected by food. So food is so important when we look at it as a fuel for our uh, machine, which is our body. And, and that's head to toe. It doesn't stop right at our neck. It is head to toe as our body. It's our, our machine, as I said um, in that podcast in, in Food for Thought, was that think of your body as uh, an expensive car, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini. Would you put horrible gas in it that it's going to put, put along? No, you put the best high quality gasoline in it because it's, it's, a, it's a, a fine-tuned engine machine that is just, I mean, you want to go to zero to 90 in uh, 0.2 seconds, but we don't do that for our body. Instead, we, we fill it full of junk and we expect it to go on demand and it just doesn't do that. So uh, food, uh, food for Thought was a great episode. I encourage you to go back and listen to all of that um, as we talk about some different things in that. And, and then uh, just last week, I sat down with my wife, Kim, and we talked about uh, managing anxiety. Uh, I, I wanted to share with, you know, the, the things that Monica had to share with us were wonderful. And, and you know, we could kind of uh, place them and think, well, how could I use that in my life? How could, oh, I bet somebody I know could use that. And so we, uh, so that was, that was talking. And I wanted to kind of show, um, and talking about food, and I wanted to kind of, uh, with Kim, I wanted to kind of show what's it look like in real life. I want to share a little bit of, of her and I's life with you um, to, to kind of see how we manage that. How does that look in real life? Because sometimes we know um, ideas and, and principles are great, great in theory. But when we go to put them in our life, we go, this isn't working. I don't have a clue how this is working. I, I don't know. I don't get this. Yeah, it sounded great when I heard it. I thought, oh, I can implement that. But then it just went to, to the uh, to the pits when I try to implement it in my life. So I want to share a little bit, Kim and I did, um, about our life and about her anxiety, kind of how uh, we work together to, to manage it. And I wanted you to, to see uh, in real life, what does that look like? Um, and, you know, and we, we've worked on it for years and, and it's a process. It's, it's nothing that's fixed overnight. And, and I don't know um, if fixed is the right word. Um, it's managed. Uh, we manage it. There Are there still times when when uh, anxiety rears its head in uh, in her uh, high functioning anxiety in me yes it does uh, but 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 her and I communicate and we learn to uh, manage those uh, helping each other along the way and we work on on managing those some of the ways uh, she manages her anxiety is she loves I don't know if she loves to clean but she cleans when she when her anxiety is a little bit higher. Um, it just helps her calm down, uh, helps her clear her head. Um, you know, another thing that, that Kim shared with us is that she tells she tells others uh, if, if she's going to do something. She goes, "Look, uh, my anxiety runs pretty high. Um, I need to know exactly where I'm going. If she's going in to deliver something or talk with somebody, I need to know where I'm going. What door I need to go into? Who I need to talk to? Um, if that person's not there, what do I need to do?" 
And so she she uh, communicates that uh, ahead of time, and that and that helps her manage it some, um, not all, but it does help. Uh, knowing knowing more details for her is is very beneficial. Um, just as as her and I talk, just to like going into a restaurant, I need to know where I'm going to go sit. Um, you know, where do I go to be seated? You know, which way am I going to go? Uh, all those different things. And, and, and her friends, she communicates well with her friends. Um, so they know, and then they um, are aware of that. They know when they go places, they go on girls trips, that there are situations that could uh, trigger her anxiety. And so they're cautious of that, and they'll, they'll communicate with her and say, that's going to that's gonna get you worked up or that's going to cause anxiety. And she says, yes, it is. And that's okay, let's do something different. Um, so uh, it, it's really about, for her and I, and, and we've learned our learning, that it's really about uh, communication, communication with each other, uh, communication with others. Um, I share a story about, about me and, and, a, and a video that, that I sent her, and then um, she kind of sent it back to me and kind of hurt my feelings. Um, so go listen to that. Um, it's just managing anxiety with Kim. Uh, and it's just a really great episode as her and I sit down and, and chat about that, um, how that looks in our life, how that looks in, a, in real life, and how we manage that. And so um, that's kind of what we talked about so far this month. And it's just been a very uh, great um, conversation this month um, on from a clinical perspective um, to the foods we put in our body to how does that look in real life and how do we implement that. And in, in this last uh, episode uh, for the month on mental health, I just wanted to share, I was, I was thinking about as a, as a personal trainer, I was thinking, you know, w- what does it take um, to be physically healthy? Um, because I really believe that that the principles that mental health and physical health have, they are very uh, similar, if not the same. The principles to to get those two um, are, are the same. Um, so as I was thinking about physical health and how do we how do we get that? Um, and, and the first thing is we have to work on it daily. It has to be something that is worked on uh, every day. It just can't be um, just hit or miss. Uh, my grandmother uh, called her Nana. Uh, she would always, I remember her sitting in her chair, you'd walk into her house and she'd have her feet up on the ottoman and she'd be sitting in this, uh, in her, it's, it's kind of a, uh, almost like a patchwork chair. She loved that chair. Uh, my dad still has it at his house, and, and I go over there and I sit sometimes. And when I go to visit my parents, and I sit in that chair, and I just I just remember my nana, and and I can picture her sitting there um, when I come in the door and have her feet propped up on the ottoman, and she'd be doing a crossword puzzle or a word find, and I'd say, Nana, I said, what 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 are you doing? Um, and she said, I'm keeping my mind sharp. I'm keeping it I'm keeping it working. And, and I thought about that, and I thought, you know how I mean, and that was who that was probably 20 years ago. Um, that I that I'd ask her that, and and it, it's and I thought, man, isn't that true? She worked on that every day. Uh, we you know we we come into the gym, and what do we do for our for our physical health? We might get on the treadmill, we might get on a bike, we might get on an elliptical, we might lift some weights, uh, but whatever we do, we there's resistance. There's resistance in the weights we lift. You know, we're lifting some pounds. Um, on the treadmill, it might be going a little faster, might be going up a hill. Same thing with an elliptical, might increase the resistance, all those different things. But we're, we're, we're putting our body into stress uh, by adding weight, adding resistance, whatever it is. And isn't that true with my uh, Nana doing a crossword puzzle or a word find? She's working her mind. She, that, was the, that was the resistance um, that it was taking for her mind to keep working, to keep, okay, now, now, Okay, all these letters are jumbled. I'm trying to find the, the, a word out of it. I'm trying to find this word. And, and then the crossword puzzle um, and is, you know, okay, the, here's the clue. Let me think about that. It's, it's putting that, um, that five-pound weight um, on our mind, on our brain, to make it um, think a little bit harder, to make it work a little bit harder for it to grow. Uh, and, 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 and that's what she did um, to help keep her mind sharp and and we don't necessarily have to do a word finder crossword puzzle, but but my question is, what are you doing? Um, just as if you were going to the gym to work out, what are you doing um, to keep your your mental strength up? What are you doing uh, to what are you working on that's doing the heavy lifting uh, for your mind? And so I encourage you to to think about that and, and what's going to make my mind work. Um, you know, for me, uh, I, I like to listen to. Um, podcast, I listen to a lot of uh, YouTube podcasts, I like to watch mine um, versus listening to them just because I like to, I like to, uh, especially when it's interviews, I like to see how the per- person's moving. And um, that's one of the things that encouraged me to go uh, 
start YouTube this year, doing it on YouTube is because um, I like to see I like to see the person's body language. I like to see what they look like when they're talking. So I thought if I like that, surely there's others that might. So we'll start putting on YouTube. But anyhow, um, I started listening to those, and and um, that's kind of my brain work. That's kind of my uh, mental health. It's you know I'm putting the heavy heavy lifting in because I listen to the guest and and the content and think. Okay, now how can I apply that to my life? What am I doing? Um, might work through scenarios. Might um, how can I get better? What things can I do to manage my mental health? Um, I might try this. I might try that. And so it really puts my mind to thinking and moving, um, and, and and working. And and that goes along with that is what happens when if we go to the gym one day, uh, and you know it's the new year, we're all pumped up. We go to the gym one day on the day after New Year's and go, man, that was a great workout. And six months later, we hit the gym one more time. Man, that was the best workout. Man, that was awesome. New Year rolls around and, like, oh, man, I was going to get in shape this year. And we've only been, we only went to the gym twice. Is what, it, it, the same is true about our mental health. Um, yes, it, it's two more times than we might have gone otherwise. But for real improvement to happen, same thing is true with mental health and physical health. We have to be consistent with it. It has to be something that we do um, on, on a weekly basis. Um, I'd like to say daily basis, uh, but you know, sometimes we don't exercise on a daily basis. Sometimes it might be two, three, four times a week. Um, what works best for our body, what works for our schedules, all these things. Uh, the same is true with our mental health. Are we, are we getting it in uh, you know, once a week, twice a week, three times a week? Maybe we'll get it in five times a week. Hey, maybe we're getting in seven times a week where we, you know, we have something different every day. We have some meditation. Um, you know, we have some quiet time. Uh, we have, you know, some crossword puzzles. We have some word finds. We have some puzzles, um, you know, different things that are just putting our mind to work. Maybe we're journaling. Uh, maybe we're just sitting and thinking. Uh, so, so whatever that is, we're just consistent with it. Uh, we're doing it on a daily or weekly basis. I would definitely encourage you not, uh, needs to be more than just once a month. Uh, kids, again, uh, we go to the gym. If we, what if we go once a month? Sure, we're going to be a little bit healthier than if we didn't go at all, but we're going to see that bigger process, uh, progress. We're going to see bigger gains when we go on a more consistent basis. Maybe that's um, multiple times a week. Uh, maybe that's every day during the week. Whatever that is for you, the, the key is to be consistent, um, which goes back to the first one, which is we have to work on daily. Um, you know, daily as in uh, steps, uh, daily steps. Everybody has a watch that tells them how many steps they took in the day. Um, you work on that daily. Uh, I got my 5,000 steps. I got my 4,000 steps. Man, I only got 2,000 steps. I need to do a little more tomorrow. Uh, same is true with our mental health. I only um, did a little bit of this. I only, you know, spent two minutes. I need to get maybe five, 10 minutes, uh, uh, let, you know, tomorrow or the next day of my next scheduled uh, time to work on that. So it's about being uh, consistent on a daily basis. Um, in, in, any, in any way you do, maybe uh, maybe it's not you're actually working on um, that mental health, um, 100% focused on it for that day, but you're still being consistent because you're still thinking about what can I do. Maybe um, you read a little book, you read a book, and you go, oh, I can apply that, or you hear something on a podcast or a radio show, whatever it is, um, you're still kind of picking up on it daily and, and thinking, how can I implement that next time? Just like an exercise program, you're scrolling through TikTok or Instagram, and you find an exercise, oh, yeah, I'm going to put that in my next workout. That's awesome. So that's being consistent. That's working on daily. You're not actually doing the exercise that day, but you're out looking for those exercises, and you can add it to um, the next time you're going to work out. Same is true with our mental health. You're scrolling through there. Oh, man, that, that hits right on point. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to add that into my mental health routine. Just like we have a physical health routine, I believe we need to have a mental health routine. We need to be intentional about that. Um, you, you know, um, when I talk about being consistent too, over the last four years, um, I just, four years ago, I started listening to, and I've mentioned this in earlier podcasts, earlier shows, that, that, I, that I started um, uh, looking into different podcasts and listening to different um, guys and people. And that has just grown. And, and most every day, and that was, that was hit and miss, that was here and there. Uh, but now, um, on a consistent basis, almost a daily basis, I listen to some sort of uh, podcast that's going to um, help me grow mentally, um, that's going to help me think in a different way, have a new idea, uh, things like that, just because that helps me um, work on my mental health and keep it top of mind. Um, I, I, I do mental, mental and physical health together. I like to 
to work out why I'm listening to my podcast. Um, whether it's a conversation of um, actually just just this morning, I was li- listening to uh, Deepa Deepa Chokra. Deep, I'm probably saying that wrong, but um, it, it was a, a good interview on uh, with Ed Milet. But anyhow, it's kind of over my um, kind of over my head a little bit. And I was like, whew. I mean, I was I mean, listening to him talk for five minutes. And my head was kind of spinning. I'm like, man, I can't keep up. I thought, man, that's great stuff because my mind was having to work really hard. It wasn't something like, oh yeah, I've heard this stuff before. Um, Deep, I want to say, I want to keep, I can say it in my head, but when I go to say it out loud, it just uh, fumbles all up. So, uh, but, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, 10, 15 minutes into that interview. But again, it's going to be one of those I have to listen to again because it's just making my brain work really hard. Um, and for me, my brain works so much better. My mind works so much better. Uh, Why I'm doing physical activity, moving my body, my body's in a different state. I can just take in that information and, and, and I can retain it better. Um, but that one, it was, it was deep, so it was going to make my brain work, so I'm going to have to work, uh, listen to it again. Um, and the last thing is, you know, find the thing that works for you. Uh, everybody has, oh, you need to try this for your mental health. You need to do this. You need to do that. Let's take journaling, for example. Now, uh, Monica and I talked about journaling, and some people write it out. Um, I have clients that, um, you know, come to me and say, man, I've already written out, you know, it'll be first thing in the morning, I've already written four or five pages in my journal. Um, I have other clients that, that will type it out, uh, maybe on their computer, on their notes, on their phone. You know, as Monica said, it doesn't really matter uh, what, how you journal it. Just get it out there. Just get it what works best for you. And that's the same thing with physical activity and working out and diet and all of that. Uh, just like I tell my, my training clients, do what works for you. And I tell my coaching clients the same thing when it comes to uh, mental health is that do what works for you. It has to, it, it has to fit in your routine. It has to fit in your lifestyle. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, now, does that mean that, you know, if it's hard, we don't do it? No. It means that we might have to get uncomfortable, but it needs to settle down and fit into our life. For me, um, I exercise every morning. I get up super early, and that's the first thing I do. Uh, because it, when I tell people, you know, I get up at, at 3 o'clock in the morning to get my workout in, to get it done, to get ready for my first client um, at 5 a.m. because I want to be mentally and physically ready for that, um, that, that's what fits my lifestyle. That's what makes me feel the best and ready to conquer my day is to get up at three o'clock, um, get on the treadmill, hit some weights. And, and that happens, you know, five to six days a week. Um, you know, be just because that fits my lifestyle. That's my balance. It doesn't mean that, that I'm awesome because I get up at three o'clock. It's no different than somebody that gets up at five or six or seven or eight o'clock in the morning and does the same routine. It, it's just what, what works best for your body, what, what works best for your life. And because I can, and I have sustained that um, for the last uh, five or six years. Um, I actually started doing that because um, I was doing some student teaching because I wanted to be a, uh, wanted to finish my teaching certification. Um, I never became a teacher, but I had that certification, had that certification, um, just never went into the profession of teaching. Uh, but so I had a student teach and I still had to get my work out in. So I got up early and did it before uh, trained clients before I went to school uh, to student teach because I knew by the end of the day I wasn't going to. And, and when I started doing that, uh, I realized that that really set me up for a good day. It really set me up. I just felt uh, physically ready to go, woken up ready to go. And I woke up and felt uh, mentally ready for the day. And so it's just something even after my, uh, I think it was 16 weeks, 12 weeks, something like that of student teaching, I just kept with it because it was just working for me. It's just something I don't really think about. Do I necessarily like getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Not really. Um, on a weekend, if I have a chance, on a Sunday, I can sleep till 8, 9 o'clock, no problem. Um, always have been. Uh, so people say, oh, you must get up normally at, at 3 o'clock. It's like, no, I can sleep late. On vacation, no problem sleeping late. Um, I can go right back to sleeping late, no problem. But, um, but, I, don't, but I just get up, I do it because it, it fits my lifestyle. And, and the same is true with you. Uh, do it. Well, do what fits your lifestyle when it comes to um, your mental health. You know, find, you know, just like Monica said, you know, if you get a counselor, get a therapist, find one that works for you. Um, give them a few few sessions. And, and if you're just not meshing, then, then find somebody else. But, um, but, but find one that works for you. Same is true, you know, uh, maybe, um, maybe yoga really, really centers you and really gets your mental health um, in check. Uh, maybe it's journaling. Uh, there's all kinds of different things um, that can really work on mental health grounding techniques and uh, just a variety of, of things that can do um, for mental health. And I just encourage you to do what fits 
um, in your lifestyle, what you can find balance. Does that mean it's maybe uncomfortable at first? Yes, it may be to get there. Um, maybe maybe to meditate. Meditate. You know, you, it's really good for you. And you get up. You really struggle to to do it. But then you know, after a couple, you've done it for a while. It's a couple minutes, and now you're up to five minutes. Now you're up to ten. But you, you remember, you barely made it to two minutes. You thought this is the longest two minutes. You thought you were meditating. You thought, okay, it's got to be an hour at least. And you've been. It's been thirty seconds. You know, sometimes medica- meditation can be the same as if you're on the treadmill. You've been on the treadmill, you think, surely it's been, you know, 45 minutes. You look down, it's been five minutes. Um, meditation can be the same way. But the longer you do it, um, it's going to get better. And it, that may fit within your lifestyle, and it may not. Um, I've, I've tried meditating on and off. It's just a challenge for me. Uh, I'll keep trying it from time to time because I believe just like food, our, our taste buds change. Um, it, and the same is true. Um, things, things change. So why not uh, try it again from time to time to see if you like it, uh, because you might. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit about uh, what we talked about this month in mental health. It's just a great, uh, great month uh, for mental health, and I hope you found some value in it. I hope you enjoyed uh, my conversations with Monica and with Kim, um, the episode on share, um, Food for Thought, and, and, and today's episode on, on just um, work on it daily, be consistent, and do what fits within your lifestyle. Um, to help improve and maintain uh, your mental health as, um, as as we go. So any way I can help, please reach out. You can always find me at AaronDegler.com. I'd love to connect with you. You can connect there with my on my daily text. Um, I send out a weekly email. You can connect to set up to subscribe there. Um, we can get together. Um, we can have a, a free discovery call. We can talk about if you need some coaching, some training, whatever it is you might need. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can find all my information at AaronDegler.com. I'd love to get con- uh, uh, connect with you um, in one way or the other. So, hey, we'll see y'all next time. As I tell my wife, Kim, every night before we go to bed, it's bottom of the night, double A, out. <laughs>